everybody, and welcome to another installment of Shop Talk. As always, I'm Michael Stoops, and today we are going to talk about common things that the average person, the guy on the street, the folks that are taking care of their own vehicles, things that they do wrong. We've got another video talking about things that professionals do wrong, common mistakes, if you will. Uh, but in this video, we're really concentrating on what the average consumer does incorrectly uh, with their vehicle. And, and some of these things may sound a little crazy to some of you and think, come on, the people don't really do that. Uh, yeah, they do. We've, we've talked to a lot of people over the years that do a lot of pretty crazy things. Um, and some of you may be some of those people who are gonna sit back and think, oh, okay, yeah, I've, I've done that. And maybe you stopped and maybe this is what's going to make you stop. Uh, we're not trying to pick on anybody. We're not trying to make fun of anybody here. Uh, and we're also not trying to tell you that there's only one way to do anything with your car. Washing, for example, uh, foam cannon, foam gun, two bucket wash. There are different ways to wash your car. They're all perfectly safe and effective. Uh, we do want to focus on some things that, that folks do incorrectly and probably chief among those is not taking care of their vehicle often enough because things kind of degrade over time, right? Your headlights get kind of yellow and crusty. That doesn't just happen overnight. Um, if you use something like our Plastex on a regular basis, when they start to feel a little rough, it'll keep them looking really good for a long time and it'll really stave off that degradation. Uh, taking care of your paint regularly, just washing the car properly on a regular basis will prevent a lot of the buildup of fallout and things like that to start to stick to the paint and make it feel rough. Um, and doing that washing properly will help to prevent or at least minimize the creation of swirl marks and things like that. Working on the interior of the car, uh, the major touch points, the steering wheel, um, the armrests, the center console, the touch screen on your navigation, uh, all those things right they pick up the, the the oils off your skin and that can attract dirt and that can thing get things feeling kind of uh, rough and abrasive so if you go in with something like our quick interior detailer on a regular basis just wipe those things down it'll help prevent that kind of thing from happening quick interior detailer on the interior of the vehicle uh, quick detail spray on the paint is a real quick and easy way to keep all of that looking fresh and nice for a long period of time and really slow down just kind of normal degradation. But even when you're doing the quick and easy things, it's really important to be working on cool surfaces. And that's not just the paint. Glass can get really hot as well. And working on the interior, interiors get very hot. You ever sit in your car, you get to your car on a, a hot day and it's even hotter inside the car. Products don't like to be sprayed on really hot surfaces. A quick detailer sprayed onto really hot paint, you'll see it start to steam off. If you put your hand on the paint and you jump back in pain because it's so hot, the poor product can't do that. And if you spray it on and it steams off, then what's left behind when you try to wipe it off is just going to streak and smear. You're going to get frustrated. You're probably going to start scrubbing harder and that's something you just don't want to do, okay? We have a saying around here at McGuire's, frequent car care is easy car care. Sounds a little corny, but it is so incredibly true. You can do a lot in a very, very limited amount of time to keep the car, truck, van, motorcycle, boat, looking really, really good for a long, long time, okay? But when you're doing this, cool surface. Look, we took temperature readings just the other day. It was 67 degrees out, a beautiful spring day, and a black car in direct sunlight was already at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. It was hot. A black car in the shade was 75 degrees, literally half the temperature. Perfectly comfortable to put your hand on it. You could have worked on that car, no problem at all on that day, okay? Make sure the surfaces are cool. And then make sure that you're using proper tools, proper accessories, your towels, brushes, whatever it is that you're working with. There's a couple of real common things that people kind of mess up. And one of those is they reach for the dish soap, the dishwashing detergent the stuff that's really, really good at getting grease off of your dishes. It's also pretty good at taking wax off of your paint. Now, it's, it's not going to destroy the paint. It's not gonna you know, do all kinds of horrible things if you use it once. Um, but it's really not the best way to go. And then, unfortunately, a lot of people, when they use this, 
they couple it with something like this. This is an old beach towel. Um, this is not what you want to be. This is 100% cotton, by the way. Um, so are the jeans that I'm wearing. And I don't think anybody would use an old pair of blue jeans to dry their paint. You know, it's 100% cotton. This is 100% cotton towel. Uh, all these cotton loops have a lot of bite to them. And we see people using this to dry their car. And boy, I can already start to put defects in the paint just wiping this on here. Forget about scrubbing with it, right? You're working with a compound or something. You start going in like this, you will mess that paint up so fast. About the only thing that'll mess it up faster is the other thing that you commonly use in your kitchen, and that's a pot scrubber, a scrubbing pad. These are absolutely fantastic in the kitchen with your pots and pans. We've actually had people come in, I can think of two specific cases. One, a woman with a beautiful late 50s Nash Metropolitan. And she had a, a bird dropping etching on the top of the door. And she went at it a little bit with a, with, with a pad like this and immediately saw the marks that I just put in the paint and stopped immediately and we could take care of it. Another though was somebody who came in with a white car and they had done the entire hood to try and scrub issues off of it and scrub they did. This is fabulous on your pots and pans. Doesn't matter if your paint gets so hot that you can fry an egg on it that does not make it a pot or a pan. Don't use something that wasn't designed for the paint that's this aggressive. Body shops will use stuff like this to scuff the paint before they shoot clear coat, to really clean it off and effectively sand it, okay? Don't use this kind of stuff to routinely wash your car. It's not what you want. Stay with proper drying towels, stay with a proper wash mitt, use the correct tools, okay? This is critically important to keep that paint looking its best for as long as it can. And speaking of tools, let's take a look at what happens when we're dealing with some things on the outside of the car and even on the inside of the car that folks tend to go a little sideways with. Let's step over to the vehicle, take a look. All right, you know, if we're gonna talk about common mistakes that people make, we would be very remiss to not talk about probably the most gut-wrenching and sometimes frustrating mistakes. And that's dealing with wheels and tires. And, and part of that issue comes from wheels are, they're made out of all kinds of different finishes on them from OEM wheels, which, you know, used to be really easy to deal with because they were pretty much all silver painted and clear coated and um, pretty straightforward regardless of, of brand. But uh, as the aftermarket became even more and more popular, it seems, um, the OEMs have gotten more and more elaborate and fancy with their wheels. And that means a variety of different wheel finishes as well. So it's really important that you spend a little bit of time and figure out just what those wheels um, are finished as, whether it's uh, clear coated, it's powder coated, is it chrome, is it bare high polished aluminum, are they black wheels? For whatever reason, we're seeing black wheels as being more and more delicate all the time. Take a breath, slow down. Don't make the mistake of grabbing the wrong product to use on the wrong wheel. Again, when in doubt, the back of the bottle's got our phone number on it. If you're here in North America, you can call our guys right upstairs. Can help you through this, they can give you some tips and pointers. Uh, but the back of the bottle also has a label on it with directions. And those directions will help you overcome one of the most common mistakes that we see people make, and that is spraying all four wheels with a given wheel cleaner, even if it's the correct wheel cleaner. And especially if you're working out in direct sun, which we've already talked about as being a big mistake, um, if that surface is really warm to the touch and you spray all four wheels, you run the very real risk of that product starting to self-dry on the surface. Big mistake, and one that can actually be quite costly. It doesn't matter how safe the product is, it's the product being allowed to self-dry and almost bake on that surface. That's never a good thing. So follow the directions on the bottle. Uh, and there are some minor differences in the directions with some of these, which is all the more reason to not make the mistake of not reading the directions, okay? Because you may not use them exactly the same way. Uh, subtle differences, but sometimes a subtle difference can make all the difference in the world. Read the directions, 
follow the directions and work one wheel at a time to get that clean, rinse it fully with water, then move on to the next wheel. A uh, variety of wheel cleaners here, depending on severity of um, the grime on the wheel, you're probably going to need a brush of some kind to help clean those, to agitate them. It's really important here that you go with a nice, soft, safe brush that can get back into the barrels, one that's nice and soft for the face of the wheel. This is not really all that good, though, for cleaning the sidewall of the tires. A nice stiff brush like this is great on the tires, but don't make the mistake of using that stiff brush on the nice, beautifully, these are really pretty wheels too. You don't wanna hit these with a real aggressive brush that you would use on the tire sidewall. So selecting your appropriate tools and accessories becomes really important. Don't make the mistake of using necessarily the same brush for the wheel and the tire. And don't make the mistake of not cleaning that tire before you put your tire dressing on. Because one of the most common questions that we get is, do you have a tire dressing that does not sling? Sure we do. We have a bunch of tire dressings that won't sling. But if you make the mistake of loading it on real heavy because you want a real high shine, if you put almost any tire dressing on really heavy and you don't wipe off the excess or you don't let it fully cure or dry if that's how that product is designed, and if you're not sure how that product is designed, read the label. Don't make that mistake, okay? Overusing the product, whether it's tires, wheels, on the paint, interior, all of that. If some is good, more is better, really does not apply. Tire dressings that are slathered on the sidewall of the tire are going to release, once you reach a certain speed and the tires are spinning fast enough, you're gonna spot down the side of the car. Not the fault of the product. Big mistake of just loading it on really, really heavy. Let's step to the interior of the car and talk about some mistakes that people use in there, including really heavy application of product. Uh, it's kind of an eye opener inside the car where you spend most of your time. Let's take a look. All right, you know, at the beginning of this video, we talked about frequent car care is easy car care, and that's probably more true on the interior than, than anywhere else, because when you're driving along, this is what you see on your own car. And those touch points that we talked about the steering wheel, the armrest, center console, that kind of stuff that you want to take care of uh, real quick and easy can be taken care of really quickly and easily. Something like our quick interior detailer and just spray it on. No, that's a mistake. Because if you spray product on the interior, I'm trying to get the steering wheel clean. A little spray onto my microfiber towel and work that in there gets that light oil from a couple of days or a week's worth of, of experience in the vehicle, it takes care of that. If you spray directly on, big mistake, and here's why. Overspray, I'm not gonna actually do it because this isn't my car. Uh, you've got the instrument cluster back here. You've got the navigation touch screen over this way. They don't like to have products self-dry on them. And if all you're thinking about is getting that steering wheel clean and you spray this on, you're gonna load that stuff up, give it a quick wipe with the towel, ah, fine you're going to end up with, trust us on this, you're going to end up with spots that self-dry and those materials are pretty delicate and they don't like it. They don't like plain water drying on them. Don't make the mistake of just unloading that product from a trigger spray anywhere in the car. If you're working with um, a vinyl dressing and you spray that at the base of the windshield or spray it on the dash and you get the overspray on the base of the windshield, and it cleans up pretty easily. If you get it on a side window, you get it at the base of the windshield. It's just not a convenient area to go reaching for. You're just making life difficult for yourself. With something like Natural Shine, Supreme Shine, spray that onto a towel or onto a foam applicator and then apply it. You get great control and you're not laying down too much product. Too much product everywhere we look inside a vehicle is a mistake. Uh, Natural Shine, Supreme Shine, they dry completely dry, but if you load them on real heavy, you can sometimes get an uneven appearance. You get kind of a patchy look. It's not the problem with the product. It's a mistake that you made in how you applied it. If some is good, more is better. Again, just doesn't play with this. If you use a little bit less and you slow down just a little bit, you'll get a much, much better result without creating more work for yourself. Um, 
Sometimes it's just selecting the right product for what you're looking for. If you don't want a high shine on your dash and, and other internal uh, materials, Quick Interior Detailer is great or Natural Shine. Supreme Shine is going to give you a higher gloss. If that's what you want, great. But don't make the mistake of expecting a product to behave a certain way without reading the directions on the label because it tells you all about the product and how to apply it. Uh, when it comes to treating leather, cleaning is important but moisturizing or conditioning is really important. And there's a couple of really big mistakes that people make here and it can get either really annoying or it can get kind of costly. And one of the, the biggest mistakes that we see people make is when that leather gets dirty, um, keep in mind that automotive leather has a coating on it. And that coating is designed to protect the dyed leather underneath it. We've talked about how aggressive cotton can be um, and we see people that will spray a cleaner onto the leather and then they'll rub very aggressively with a cotton towel and they can pretty easily go through, right through that coating. You're not going to fix that easily or cheaply. So don't make the mistake of being aggressive, especially with a cotton towel. Microfiber can do it as well if you get really aggressive. So don't make the mistake of being overly aggressive. So a common mistake for Folks with perforated leather, they'll grab their favorite leather conditioner in a lotion form and they will quite properly dispense it onto a towel or a foam applicator, that works just as well, and then they'll just start wiping it onto the leather seats. And that high load of product will plug those pores, it'll fill them right in. And then it'll dry and then they're annoyed and the mistake was not that they use the leather conditioner, but that they applied it way too thick. Put less product on your towel and then work it into the towel a little bit so your towel is damp with product. Then you can apply that to the surface and you're good to go. Of course, you could bypass all of that headache by probably just selecting a little bit better version of that product for the task at hand. If you go with the spray version, spray that onto your towel and then it's a real easy task of then wiping onto the leather you don't need to worry about plugging those pores. Same product, same level of protection, same moisturizing and conditioning. Don't overuse product on the interior. Don't overuse it on the tires and wheels like we talked about. Let's go back and talk about not using product too heavily or not using the right product on the paint because a lot of mistakes happen there as well. Let's take a look at that. All right, now you know what to avoid when you're working on your wheels and your interior because uh, boy, that wheel thing gets crazy for a lot of people. Uh, again, read the directions on the label. It will tell you what the product is designed for um, and it will tell you how to use it. And that's really, really huge because we quite often see when people are working on their paint, they have expectations of a product that just won't do what they wanted it to do. Okay? A wax is not designed to remove all your swirl marks and do what a clay bar would do. It won't remove all those above surface contaminants. Okay, if you're using a strong cleaner wax, yes, it will remove some of the swirl marks, but typically a wax is there for protection, not correction. So don't use a wax and expect it to fix all the problems with the paint, okay? Uh, and don't use a compound like it's a wax. We, we see this, I'm surprised how often we see this, where people get a hold of something like Ultimate Compound, fantastic product, it looks an awful lot like a wax. When you, if you were to just squirt some of this down onto the paint, you just get a nice creamy bead of product. It, you, don't, you don't feel any abrasives in here. They are there. Um, Ultimate Polish looks pretty similar when you put it down on the paint. And then Gold Class Carnauba Wax, same thing. They're just nice creamy liquids. But that doesn't mean they're the same thing. It doesn't even mean that you use them the same way. For example, Ultimate Compound, this is where we see people go really, really wrong quite often. They apply it like it's a wax and they let it sit and dry. That's a compound. There are abrasives in there. It's those abrasives that mechanically work against the paint to level down or round off the edges of the swirl marks and scratches. Right now, 
that compound is doing absolutely nothing. It's sitting there and drying, and when this dries, this can become quite difficult to remove. The label says how to use it. And if you don't follow the directions on the label, there's a good chance you're not going to like the product uh, because this is not easy to wipe off when it's fully dry. If you wipe it off like you should, it comes off pretty easily. Another thing that people do really wrong is if some is good, more is better, okay? They want to apply their wax. Winter's coming. They want a nice, strong coat. Gold Class Carnuba Plus, or any of the other waxes that we have that are in paste form, come with an applicator pad. And especially with a paste wax, all you really need to do, get a little bit on that pad, and spread that out, and that will spread for a long, long time. But winter's coming, so you want to get a good strong coat of wax on there. So you scoop that stuff up out of the can, and then you just load it on. We talked to somebody once who complained about all the dust that he was getting with one of our previous waxes, the NXT Tech Wax Paste. And we said, what do you mean dust? That doesn't dust, that wipes off so easy. We asked him to send the can back to us. Just put that on nice and heavy because winter's coming and you want to get a good strong coat of wax. He sent the can back to us and you could see the bottom of the can. He used two thirds of a can to wax his car one time. When you do that, it takes forever for it to dry and then trying to wipe it off is just a nightmare. Don't overuse the product. If some is good, more is better, does not apply to anything that you're doing when you're working on your vehicle, okay? Um, and really read the directions because on a Carnuba wax, it's going to tell you almost always with a Carnuba to let it haze over and dry before you wipe it off. We've always talked about the swipe test. You run your finger through it. Man, that's on there heavy. Don't ever do this. Don't be this person, because it's no fun. But if you're using something really high tech, like our hybrid ceramic wax, this will not haze over. Read the directions on the bottle. It tells you how to use it. They're both waxes now, but they behave quite differently. So don't overuse, but we want you to enjoy using it and we want you to get the best results possible. Don't be heavy handed with the product. It's not gonna get you where you wanna go. We mentioned clay earlier. You don't need to clay your car every time before you wax it. If that paint feels completely smooth to the touch, if you've got a show car, you've got a weekend toy, we've had people come up to us and say, hey, that clay didn't work on my car because I didn't get all that nasty looking stuff that I've seen in all the videos. You come to talk to them about the car and it turns out, <sighs> The, the car probably gets driven a thousand miles a year and the rest of the time it's in a garage with a cover over it. It's not getting anything landing on it and sticking to it. If you don't need to do something, don't do it. If you don't need to compound your paint because it doesn't have any swirls or other defects in it, don't do it. We see people doing things that don't need to be done because they've heard that you should do it. Well, yeah, you should do it when it needs it. Okay, if your car is clean, you're not gonna wash it, right? Don't overdo things, just like we don't want you to underdo things like we talked about at the very start of this video. This is so common to see people just grossly overuse things. And then when it comes to wiping this off, if you grab an old cotton towel, and we talked about cotton towels before and the problems with those uh, as far as scratching the paint, but trying to pick up this product with, or any product with a cotton towel, is quite difficult compared to doing the same thing with a microfiber. Why? Because microfiber, everybody thinks about how nice and soft it is. Look how much faster that came up than that. And those were both real heavy applications that weren't ready to be wiped off yet because the directions say, let it haze over. We didn't follow the directions. Mistake right here. No, we did that on purpose. Microfiber is great because it picks things up and holds onto it. Cotton doesn't really do that. And by the way, if, if you stopped using your cotton bath towels because you think they feel too scratchy on your skin, 
Don't downgrade those to working on your car. If it feels scratchy on your skin, how do you think it feels to the paint? And that's where you end up getting all those swirl marks that then make you have to come back and use the compound and the polish. Don't confuse products, read the directions. The directions tell you everything. They literally tell you everything. Don't overuse, because if some is good, more is not going to be better for you. Like we showed on the interior, and like we're talking about on the paint right now. That's one of the most common things that people do wrong, is just seriously overusing product. It's not going to help you in any way, shape, or form, okay? Proper towels on the paint. This is the part of the vehicle that everybody sees, even when you're driving down the road. You want them to go, ooh, look at that, not, whoa, look at that, okay? Slow down, think about what you're doing. Uh, we like to tell people, if you question yourself before you do something, should I really be doing this? The answer is almost always no, because you already have stopped yourself. You've already questioned whether or not you're going to be making one of the common mistakes, or maybe you're creating one of the new mistakes that we haven't heard about yet. Don't do it. Read the directions, slow down to work faster. Everything just works better that way. That's the common stuff that the average consumer does wrong. The prosumer, the hardcore enthusiast, we see lots of mistakes uh, or silly, crazy things that, that everybody does. Don't feel bad about it if you've done them. Uh, don't laugh too hard at those that do them. And if you see somebody doing it, help them out a little bit. Use your knowledge to help somebody else do better taking care of their vehicle themselves. And if you want to check out our video on what a lot of pros do wrong, that one might be a real eye opener for some of you as well. Uh, but otherwise, hey, thanks for joining in. You know where to get us uh, through social media. We are on all the channels out there. You can find us all over the place. Uh, certainly our phone number is on the back of every bottle of product that we make. You can call those guys. They are literally right upstairs from where we're shooting this. They can answer all these questions for you on how to properly use product or selecting the right product for the job. Check us out on our forum, meguiresonline.com. Otherwise, hey, thanks again for joining in and um, hopefully you learned something and you'll avoid some of these mistakes. And otherwise, stay shiny, everybody.